Hi, and welcome to the Velix Tech Tuesday Unbox, where we chat with the industry's finest about tech, leadership, trends, and let's leave some room for surprises. I'm your host, Amir Shalem, and today we're talking with Gilad Shoham. Gilad, would you like to introduce yourself? What is your title? What do you do in your day-to-day? Sure. Uh, first, uh, thanks for uh, inviting me here. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. I'm Gilad Shoham. On my day job, I'm uh, leading the development in uh, Bit, bit.dev, not the, the transfer money app. <laughs> um, we are building a platform for component management. And except from this, I'm also an angel investor for startup, a mentor, um, and also a content creator, uh, especially about... smart homes I have a podcast I have a blog and YouTube channel uh, also doing a lot of public speaking uh, in different conferences mostly about web development and uh, smart homes and also professional debater well okay you, you do a lot of stuff yeah well, I gotta ask you so when you do all these kind of things in your life how do you find the time for it uh, because it seems like uh, I was really overwhelmed. How can you run a company and also uh, do the podcast, also uh, be an angel and an investor? How can you do all of those and still find time? I, I managed to catch a little bit about you and I know you also have a family. Yeah. Yeah. So four how kids. can... Yeah. Four kids. Okay. Four little kids. Yeah. How do you find time for all those? So um, I have some ways to manage my time and it's actually... Not exactly manage my time but manage my tasks or, or achievements um, I like to call it something like a time management in in certain environment and it's based on um, breaking my task to baskets according to how long they take uh, what um, devices or, or extra stuff they need like if they need a mobile or if if I need the computer and how much um, focus they need and then every time I have some spare time even like for 30 seconds I'm putting something there so I can in the morning I can plan to answer a whatsapp or, or a support ticket in slack in the evening while I'm uh, while the microwave is uh, eating the the bread for my kids so a lot of optimization wow it's uh... and not sleeping of course. <laughs> like all of us yeah I would like to have like uh, more more planned you know uh, we're all living in time of great uncertainty so uh, it's like a good a good way to go can you tell us a little bit about what sparked your uh, interest in your current field like uh, what set your career so I like to I mostly wo- like the web development field and especially the dev tools uh, and infrastructure and I, I find myself always trying to build tools and and methods for for improving the development as like kind of a multiplier for the development because development in general is a multiplier for for many things and if I multiply the multipliers then I'm doing the most impact so um, I'm working both on creating tools like technical tools for developers and also around methodologies and And philosophies around the dev, around the development so to to improve not only the technical aspect and also the the process of development to make development faster and more efficient what inspired you to do that mostly doing impact and making others feel good like when I look for a job in the previous uh, time I did a lot of interviews like 52 companies in a month and Uh, that, that, that's that's crazy I know also in the optimization part yeah yeah 52 companies like I think four or five interviews for each one of them so I did I think more than 200 interviews in one month wow. um, and some of the rules that I defined for myself is that I want to work on something that there is someone on the other side a person a human person that will start his day and saying to himself what luck that this product or this company exists it make my life easier and not working on some kind of 
a deep optimization stuff that I don't know will will increase some revenue for big companies because it's I don't know optimize the uh, advertisement uh, process and then it costs them uh, one million dollar less uh, I want to have someone on the other side that enjoy my work you're focused on the on the human on yeah. the on the end of it yeah is it something that you always thought you're gonna do or something that you like you What was this uh, Eureka moment for you? Um, I think a long time ago, um, I always liked computers since I remember myself. I think I started developing at age 10, something like this, like um, fourth grade, something like this. HTML, CSS back then, <laughs> it wasn't uh, like today. There wasn't a Flexbox. Um, I remember HTML5 came out. This yeah. was the, the greatest thing ever. Yeah, I think. <laughs> I don't remember which HTML it was back then, but <laughs> it was a long time ago. Uh, but I always like to work with people. So I always use computers as kind of a mean to achieve something bigger and not as the, uh, as the goal itself. And, and I think it was like this since ever. Cool. Uh, actually, you mentioned goals. So... Maybe you can tell us a little bit about your long-term goals and aspirations for uh, what you're currently working on. Um, I mean bit, L- like uh, what's your, not what you're currently working on there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I want bit to be like also to, to um, utilize its potential. And I really believe that bit can be a very, very big company. Like I believe it can get into one hundred billion dollars company. Uh, as, as uh, potentially because I really think we are in the stage that we can we need to change some crucial part of how we develop software because there are much more developers and now we have like all the new uh, AI tools in the in the neighborhood and many of this require some changes for the original or for the current uh, methodologies and processes and tools to make it scalable. And keep the the velocity and quality of of software if you were to say like one thing that makes uh bit so great like for uh for my team we're developing uh a new product we're working on you know many things we're working with our uh with our git we're working with our c i tools what would be the one thing that would make us use bit um work faster and still better hmm I But think by improving like the share uh, sharing code and standards across the team across the organization um, then you can stop like uh, repeating yourself and invent the wheel again and again and instead like just build on what you built yesterday on top of what you built yesterday and then you get better consistency better collaboration a faster development and still maintain the the quality of code and Cool. I'm very looking forward for our uh, Tech Tuesday to understand more about uh, bit.dev. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Um, tell me a little bit, if I was a junior in the Israeli high-tech industry, what was your advice? What would be your advice for me? Um, first, I have a very long blog post about it, which I uh, published on HackerNoon, and I got the Uh, Akernun writer of the year on this uh, specific blog post so I can uh, put it later on the comments yeah cool um, so I think one of the major parts of uh, being a junior is w- when I in, I want to hire you or when I want to hire a junior I'm trying to minimize my risk and hiring a junior is always a big risk and you need somehow to show me that the risk is is less than the hiring someone else by showing your commitment your passion you love to the topic uh, by showing like more soft skills than because because you don't have like a real stuff that you can show me and you can do this by uh, creating content around the topic on doesn't matter which platform by going to a meetup and, and do a talk even if you're a junior it's definitely possible and By building some side project or, op- or contribute to open sources so I will feel that it's less risky to hire you it's not fake it till you make it you say it's uh what, what is it it's make it until you make it make it until you make it I, I actually love it because I feel like juniors are always so afraid of saying like um, 
I'm not a pro like you. And, and most of us are pros just because we're doing it, right? Because yeah. we, we've been to the place where we had a, an issue, we had a problem, and we were managed to fix it, to do it by ourselves. I think it's like, uh, it's something like a stepping stone that you need to go through. Actually, that, that's interesting because just today, when I uh, talked to, uh, uh, earlier today with someone, I, I mentioned that I, I'm not doing a lot of podcasts in English and it's hard for me. Probably mm-hmm. you can hear a little bit about it. But the only way to make it perfect is to go through, uh, it's okay, it's fine, it's good, it's excellent, and then it's perfect. And there is no other way to do it. You need to, to go through this, this road and it's hard, but if you keep going, eventually you will get there. I think that's an amazing, amazing way to look at it. Um, we're always getting better in it. Do you have any hobbies? Uh, yes. So, uh, a lot of them, uh, like I said, I, I doing a uh, professional debating, which is kind of a hobby. I'm going to, to uh, competitions. Sometimes, sometimes I'm judging, uh, competitions even. How many, uh, how many people in Israel are doing debating? Um, a lot. The, actually the Israeli uh, lead of debating is, is very strong. One of the strongest in the world. Because we like way. to argue. Yes, because yeah. we like to argue and probably because we have a lot of real topic to argue all yeah. the time. <laughs> but, but Israel is very, very good and the, and it's very developed in Israel. Uh, so I guess a few hundred at least, and I'm doing it for 10 years, something like this. Yeah. Also, I'm uh, yeah. playing uh, table tennis, semi-professional now. I used to play professional, but now not. Uh, I play chess also professionally. Uh, I'm, I'm now, I like kind of quit from the professional chess uh, league a uh, long time ago, but I was the... Uh, we won first place in the world when I was sixth grade for teams. Uh, and a bit after it, I, I quit for the, from competition and stuff because I was too exhausted. Um, what else? I, I like technology. I like smart homes. It's also a hobby. And building stuff from, from wood at home. So I'm building many of my stuff my own. And what else? Probably I forget some stuff. Wow. I- Swimming every day. I, I can't even imagine how your schedule is looking like. I, if, it's actually pretty empty. If you look at my calendar, it's empty. <laughs> yeah. It's everything is like unexpected. I, I, I know that my life is unexpected, especially with four little kids. So I'm just, I'm just optimizing the, 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 um, the difference between I have a time now to do something until I start doing it. So it won't just um, uh, dismissed. I need you to say this again. I have the time to, to do something until I start it. Yes. So let's say you, you thought you are going to, I don't know, to, to bring the kid from uh, school now and be with him uh, two hours now until my wife is coming back from work. I know that, that one, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then suddenly uh, your mother said, you know what, I will take the kid now. Um, and now you have two hours free. So what are you doing? How long it, t- it took you to... To fill Start, this block. Yeah, to fill this block with something. With two hours, maybe it's easier because it's a long block, but what if it's 10 minutes? Mm-hmm. Okay, even five minutes. How long? So I'm, I'm trying to take all the bureaucracy and small stuff and just put them wherever. So if I need to call a doctor or to schedule, I don't know, something uh, or, uh, with my car, I don't know, then I'm just doing it right away when I have one minute. You have a bucket of fillers. It's, uh, yes. it's nice. I, I, feel, I think it's a good, a good way to do this. Let me ask you a question uh, about some other things. Sure. Uh, although this, I found this fascinating. When you look on, on uh, emerging technology, what do you find uh, interesting? What do you believe in? Um, so we have the AI now. Yeah. And everyone looking at AI and what is going on. On with AI and technology. You're excited about AI? I'm exciting. I'm a bit afraid, I mm-hmm. have to say. Um, I think that many people say that we will be fine as, as human being in general. We, we, we are fine. We were fine in every revolution until now. And everyone thinks it's going to be the same. Uh, so I, want, I don't want to, to sound too pessimistic, but I think this revolution is different and it might be not that 
uh, good for us in the future. On the other hand, I'm sure it will bring many, many good things as well. And I think uh, if we're talking about AI and technology specifically and, and maybe about AI and code, I think that we need to shift uh, the way we are utilizing AI to help us writing code. Because today we are optimizing code generation with AI, which creates huge problem because it's just duplicating the code again and again without any consistency and everything. And if today we duplicate code with the power of AI, we will duplicate code. thousand times more mm-hmm. and we need to change how we look at AI and to teach it and to optimize it for reuse our code and compose our code instead of generating new code okay yeah I'm, I'm not sure how how is it uh, going to look like um... so uh, first we are working on something like this mm-hmm. uh, it's now on development and it's it works pretty good I have to say uh, even now on, on development it's not yet production ready but it In general, uh, the process is we will look on your code and if your code is already split into separated components in the individual components, component can be anything. It's not, it's not like a UI component. It can be any component, mm-hmm. uh, just a piece of software. Uh, and you have a proper API and it's small and focus. Then if you teach the AI to look at this and when you get a task, let's say, I don't know, uh, build me a login page. And instead of just putting you... tons of code for a logging page it it do another process that is uh, breaking the, this task to components and then breaking each component to its own component and then like recursively until you build the entire tree and then search for each node from the tree it search for existing code in your private uh, components of your organization and then it took it and just build or just generate the glue code utilizing the API of the existing components. And then give you only missing components and glue code this um, is how it looked like in general I can imagine it better it's a good picture so you were saying before that uh, you are doing some investing and you're uh, you're doing some uh, work as an angel right yeah so uh, Uh, maybe you can tell me a little bit how do you see empowering can you describe me a little bit about what is your approach towards leadership yes so um, In general, I think that leadership is a bit different than management uh, and especially in the uh, in the terms of who uh, who has the power because in management the power is is of the manager he can force you to do something and you need to follow him until, unless otherwise you will I don't know get fired or punished in any way uh, you have some sanction. With leadership, it's different. You do something and people follow you because they want to follow you, because they believe in, in your way, in your cause, in, in, uh, in how you're doing things. And they have the power if they want to follow you or not. Uh, and a major part of it is like uh, leading by example and require yourself what you require from, from other people. And... And not and listen to the listen to the to the people and and be able to change your mind if they convince you and not thinks you are the smartest person in the room so it's more like a leader is more in a collaboration with the others and not above the others that's in general I'm, I'm thinking like how do you build these kinds of relationships right I, I think it's a lot about uh, how do you communicate with the people but how What kind of relationships do, do you build as a leader with uh, other people? So I think it's in, in, it's in two fields. So the, the professional field, I'm trying to be able to at least not, not be better than them in, in different stuff, but at least be good enough to challenge them, to ask the right question and to kind of judge or to, to challenge their, their answers. Uh, and this requires many times a lot of work around the like behind the scenes to to learn about the topics my my team is a very special team I have a team of like top talents from the world some of the most famous developers in the world working on in my team I can say some names if it's relevant like I have Zoltan who, who built pnpm is probably the best people for dependency management in the world and they have someone who was part of the core team of Vue.js oh. and someone who was part of the core team of Angular. So some of the smartest people in the world and probably I don't know more than them in 
these topics, but at least I want to be able to challenge and, and having a good and deep discussion about it. So this is like professionally. On the more personal uh, approach, I think it's a lot about really uh, taking care of them. Um, and this is, um, it's, it's about to understand that you are on the same side. Many organizations and, and leaders think that it's like a um, zero sum game. So if the employee is uh, earning, then, they, then the, the business is losing and, or, or the other way around. But it's actually, you are on the same side because you can both benefit. So I'm trying to take care of my people. Uh, it's, uh, f- for example, let's take an, a real example. Um, my one, Zoltan, my, one of my employees, is working from, uh, he's living in, in Ukraine. Mm. And sometimes in the wars, it, it was um, like the Russians kind of bomb the electricity uh, station. So we didn't have a lot of electricity most of the day. And I insist to, uh, to buy him a generator. Yeah, and he, he, he didn't understand it. It's like, and I said, I want you to have the generator. I want you to feel good. I want you to, to have TV for the kids. So you can, or, or heating system to, for water or for, for your apartment, because this is part of being human. Uh, it's not related to how much you can work. It's related to me taking care of you. Uh, and it's about uh, sharing my personal stories around the um, uh, Jewish holidays every time. I'm every, every Jewish holiday, I'm sending some pictures and sharing my own experience and how I experienced this, uh, this holiday, what we are doing with my family and, uh, and, what, uh, uh, and stuff around it. So it's becoming kind of a, a friend and and really care about them. I think it's one of the most uh, influential things that you can do, really care about your employee. I think they really sense it. Yeah. Uh, let me ask you, uh, I have this uh, game where I uh, tell you some kind of word and you would try to your best to answer me with uh, association that you have or some thought about it. It's an association game, yeah. Yeah. So uh, let's, let's try it, okay? Yeah. I will try not to ask too, too DevOpsy <laughs> things, okay? But I can ask you. Yes, you can. Yeah, DevOps. <laughs> <laughs> DevOps. Um, I think that DevOps should be combined with Dev. I think that it should be more intertwined with, with developers. Uh, we have all this uh, stuff about infrastructure as code and stuff like this. And, and this is great movement. And I think we need to automate it. And automating it meaning write code. And if you're writing code that related to DevOps, you are in a very thin line between developers and DevOps. I remember when DevOps people weren't like, uh, you know, this special breed. It's like yeah. they were developers that just did another part, uh, another part of the shift. But it's okay. Um, Git. Git. Git is great and it was really revolutionary. Uh, back then, but I think it's time to replace it with a different paradigm. Uh, I can say that we are in the company, in most projects, we don't use Git anymore. And of course, not GitHub and stuff like this, because we don't have Git. Um, and Any other SVNs? What? No. So we, we use Bit to replace Git, uh, because we are, we are moving from managing uh, in a central place, because Git, Git origin uh, mission or origin... Um, essence was about distribution and it's really distribute the version control system but it keep the uh, centralization of the code because in a git project you work on a project on on a project on an app or something like this while we want to do version management for components individually and to decouple the component uh, from the app or from the project completely decentralizing the way that you store code? Not the way that you store, because you still have some kind of remote server, but the, the, the place where you manage your code. So for example, uh, locally, when you de- where you develop your code. So for example, in our case, most of my development is done in a temp folder in my computer that is deleted every time I'm reboot. Because I'm working on a component on a new folder, I'm shipping it, and then I can delete this project and start a new folder tomorrow for another component, another task. So... I don't have a stateful uh, kind of uh, 
project. Mm-hmm. But oh. it's a big shifting, so it will take time. Okay. Cloud. Cloud. Cloud solve a lot of problems. It's, uh, it make all the DevOps much easier on one side and much more complicated on the other side. <laughs> yeah. uh, because like you said, in the beginning, developers were doing DevOps because DevOps was locally and kind of simple. And now we have cloud. Now we need a new profession to manage all these massive cloud um, products. Each cloud has tons of products, tons of configuration. So we need to know more, but we get much better results. And it really helped to reduce the, the barrier for new uh, companies to, to, to get scale because you can just put money on it and not putting time and effort. Yeah, and also you get tons of optimizations for yes. everything. It's not just uh, this machine for that. Like you can really optimize the way that you work. I think it's the, yeah. one of the best things that happened. Um, impact. Impact. Wow, impact, it's a, a very abstract word. Impact, impact is, is on people, is on the economy, and, and eventually impact is on a specific people because, you know, the, if you look on, let's say, a country, okay? Country is not waking up in the morning drinking coffee, okay? It's people from the country who drink coffee in the morning. So the impact must go through people that's that's good um let me finish uh with asking you i'm always asking can you give me a recommendation for something that uh, touched you lately it could be a book it could be a movie it could be a song that you heard not hurricane uh, <laughs> not hurricane no. okay. um okay so uh like you uh, already hear i don't have a lot of time to to watch movies um I do read, not too much, not as much as I want, but some books that I really like uh, recently is um, Zero to One by uh, Peter uh, Thiel, uh, who created PayPal and, and invested in LinkedIn and Facebook, Yelp, whatever. Um, and in general, I really like the to be the ones that doing the Zero to One and not One to One Hundred. Um, it's where the... Innovation happens is where the ch- real change happens. Uh, and this, this book really made big impact on me. I read it uh, a few years ago, but it's still with me every day like this. Even just this phrase, zero to one, is, is um, accompany me um, all the time. I want also to recommend, uh, we, we talk a little bit about leadership and stuff. Uh, I want to recommend the podcast by uh, Tony Arad Felik from Manager to Leader. Oh. Uh, it's a great podcast in Hebrew. Um, and it, she's really uh, putting a lot of effort to, to describe this distinction and what um, stuff you need to, to embrace to be a real leader, a true leader. Sounds great. I... Uh, Both of your recommendations are uh, something that I would, uh, would like to read. I would like to hear. Thank you very much. Uh, Gilad, we will host you on Tech Tuesday, and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, bit.dev. What should we expect in, the, in that uh, Tech Tuesday? So we are going to talk uh, especially about the ripple uh, effect, like uh, I call it. It's mostly about how you scale the... Uh, up dependencies update across your graph of of your of your organization so how you change versions uh, massively effectively and safely uh, in different ways of like um, we are going to to discuss product uh, like the challenges on it um, and how we can solve and make it automate but still uh, safe and fast uh, there are a lot of devops aspect around it and Because it's a, l- a lot of moving parts that uh, need to somehow play together in, in harmony. So that's, uh, that's what we are going to discuss. Okay. Thank you very much. And I had a really good time hosting you today. And uh, we'll see you very soon. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Bye-bye. This podcast is a review of the Vellips Tech Tuesday webinar. So, if you're interested in our in-depth discussion about the latest development in DevOps, check out the webinar on our website and the show notes.